Okay, welcome to our webinar. Um, I think I know most of you people on this webinar, so there's one or two people that I don't recognize the names. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sean van den Berg, our Head of Client Education here at PSG Wealth. Um, with every webinar, uh, any questions you have, you just type in the question box, and if I haven't covered it within the webinar, there will be a slot for, for answering uh, questions. That's number one. Number two is that uh, this webinar is being recorded. I clicked on the record button. So I'll be sending you the PDF as well as the recording and the email, hopefully, in the next few days. You also remember there's our um, webinar archive. If you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find uh, uh, all our past webinars there too. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, today's webinar's title is What to Do When Changing Jobs. You take one step further, or when you are dismissed or retrenched, the main question is, what do you do with your pension or provident fund? In other words, what are your best options when uh, it comes to your, your current pension or provident fund? And that's the, uh, the gist of today's um, presentation. Your goal, if you're in that situation, is obviously to preserve and potentially grow your retirement savings. Okay. And you can see there's a little subtitle there. Um, that's a quote from... Um, from Abraham Lincoln, um, and he says the best way to predict the future is to create it. And the reason why I put that in is that uh, the way I look at it is uh, you want to be in control of your finances, number one. And number two, I always believe in that uh, let your money work for you. <laughs> okay. So that's just a quick introduction. Um, he has another little quote. Uh, this is a quote from Frank Eberhardt. The goal of retirement is to live off your assets, not on them. In other words, living on, on your furniture, buying furniture with your retirement funds or uh, living in your, your your car and things like that. Okay. Um, maybe we'll talk about it more in more detail just now. But to put it into a nutshell, uh, you know, you can take it one step further. The quote from um, Dave Ramsey. He's a uh, big uh, radio host, a talk show host in the States. He says, we have a big, we have a retirement crisis in America today, not because of lack of money, but a lack of vision. And I think that's also, if you bring it back to South Africa, the problem, yeah. So, you know, how rewarding your retirement life is after retirement all depends on how well you plan and obviously make provision for it now. Um, you know, if you're leaving your employee's fund, your, your retirement fund, due to resignation or retrenchment, um, or you just, or they're just winding up your retirement fund, it's essential that you preserve your current retirement savings. You know, we have this uh, short-term, uh, I call it short-term gratification. We like to go spend our money, enjoy it now, and obviously down the line, it's consequences. I'll touch on more detail, uh, more, um, in more detail just now. But also, you might, uh, you know, you, perhaps you're retiring soon. If so, you need a plan that will help you grow your capital and provide a level of income uh, that enables you to maintain your current standard of living. So this is all just part of the intro. Um, while waiting for more people to log in. But um, what is the current situation for a lot of people? As I say, um, I know, for example, my sister-in-law, she resigned from her job. Um, she took some of her, 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 her problem fund and she paid off her bond. Obviously, that was the biggest, uh, ex call it living expense, because she was going to start her own business. Um, so obviously, less than expenses. Um, so yeah, there's pros and cons, but we're going to do in more detail just now. What is the current situation? We all know that uh, it's important to have some savings plan in place for our retirement. But what happens if to our retirement plans if our career path changes? In other words, as I say just now, we're moving between jobs or being retrenched or being dismissed. Okay, <laughs> I can see some of those little pictures there. I don't want to be all doom and gloom today. Um, what's important is all those situations means that your money that you've saved up so far uh, in your retirement fund becomes available to you. Okay, if that happens, it is vital to make good choices, and this is what I want to stress today, about what to do with that money. Um, taking it cash means that you start all over again for your pension funds, and obviously that will cost you a lot in taxes. We'll talk about taxes also just now. So, yeah, we look at a scenario where, uh, you know, you're changing jobs. Let's be on the positive side here. You're changing jobs, um, and obviously that has a big imp impact on your pension planning. So a new job is exciting and challenging, yes. It's got those challenging prospects. Um, it offers the promise of personal growth and obviously higher income. Um, the grass is always green on the other side, as I always say. But, um, you know, it has consequences when it comes to your planning. 
Um, if your new employer offers a pension or provident fund and you're eligible to join, then you must become a member of that fund. Okay, your new employer is required by law to make it a condition of your employment. Okay, this is good news. Okay, because especially if you're not uh, presently providing for your pension. A workplace retirement fund is usually the, the most effective way to save, namely, uh, number one, because it's a disciplined and effective, uh, a cost-effective environment. That's number one. And number two, obviously, the, the structure confers available tax benefits. Now, they changed the tax uh, scenario now where all your, t your retirement funds is up to 27.5% can be deducted as, as a tax, um, or your contributions can be, de can be deducted. Okay. But there's three scenarios in this scenario, in this situation, either being retrenched or dismissed or you got to start a new job. You have three options when leaving. Okay. You can cash your, your, your fund in. You can transfer it to another fund or it's a combination. Okay. You can choose a combination of the two. We strongly advise against cashing in your provident or your um, pension fund. Um, you know, it's very popular, as I said just now, in South Africa. It's so popular, in fact, that very few people can afford to retire. Because why? They have misspent their retirement savings ahead of time. So don't do it. You know, remember what the money was for, what you saved up in the, in the, in the first place. It was to support your retirement, not to splash out on holiday or on your car. And we'll look at the, and on the next slide, we'll look at the example. Okay. Also, remember, you lose out, not only on your savings, but also the return that you would have earned on those savings, as well as the compounding of the rest of your working life. And that can be far bigger than, than you can imagine. So let's look at a, a, a an example. Yeah, we've got a guy, he's investing a thousand rand a month into a fund, he's earning a, a net 4% real return. In other words, um, after cost and inflation, after 40, 40 years, for example, this fund uh, has the potential to grow to 1.14 million, okay, 1, 1 million and, and 140,000. But let's say in this scenario, after 10 years, you decide to change jobs and you take this money out and you upgrade your car, okay, and you decide, okay, I'll start over with my new job, I'll start with my, my pension fund. So let's say in this scenario, you have saved up in your pension at this point in time 144,000 rand. On retirement, if you uh, in this scenario, your retirement would only be worth 673,000 as opposed to 1.14 million. In other words, you're making less and for, you, you, your pension is 41% less. Your car that you went and splurged out on actually has cost you much more than you thought it was because you actually lost uh, a 467,000. That is possibly a comfortable retirement that you're missing out on there. So that's the, that's the, um, the challenge that you need to decide what you'll do that with your money. Okay, so moving forward, um, what is our deal situation? And the way I look at it always is that uh, you want to be in a situation where one of the best ways things you can do for your future is to preserve your retirement benefit. Remember, you want to be in a situation where it keeps on growing, okay, so you can enjoy a happy retirement one day. So you know, I look at it this way, you want to be in a situation where, and I've spoken about it in many, many other webinars before, where you're feeling confident that you've made, uh, the, that you've done the right thing, uh, you made the right investment choices and decisions and things like that. Your investments are still growing, beating inflation by a nice margin. But also bottom line, you know, I always say you want to have a peace of mind, that you want to be in a situation where I call swan, sleep well at night, that your investments are in place. So that's our ideal situation. So how do we get there? Okay, so few individuals, okay, remain with the same employer for the whole working life. Now, you may resign and things like that. So we are proposing today is what we say is a preservation fund. And they are vehicles specific, specifically designed to safeguard your retirement savings. So we pref we're suggesting, a, as I say, a preservation fund. Um, and the way to look at it, you might be on a pension fund, you might be on a problem fund or a combination of the two of them. Uh, a pension fund, or a pres sorry, a preservation fund, as I say, it's just a vehicle. Okay, the way I look at it is a place where you can park your money. <laughs> okay, transition period. But let's look at it this way. From a from a pension fund, let me bring my cursor in here quickly. From a pension fund, I can invest into a pension preservation fund or a retirement annuity. 
A provident fund, on the other hand, gives you more flexibility. And we'll talk about those just now. Uh, you can invest into a pension pre uh, preservation fund or a provident preservation fund or a retirement annuity. Okay, so those are some of the, um, a quick intro into, into all of them. Just give me my cursor here quickly. Okay, so I mentioned just now preservation funds preserve your investment and tax benefits. Okay, of the pension or provident fund. When you move your money from a pension or provident fund into a preservation fund, that movement or that transfer is tax free. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, your investment returns within those preservation funds are tax free. In other words, you're not going to pay any tax on, on, on income tax and you're not going to pay um, any uh, capital gains tax. But also, the benefits are taxed at a fav on a favorable basis. So the lump sum benefits, as I say, are taxed on a, on a, on a, on a sliding scale and the portion left behind, for, for example, in a living annuity or also um, uh, work on a sliding scale. But you can allow, you're allowed to take out a portion uh, of the benefit the tax free. You see this example just now when I talk about before uh, uh, retirement age and after retirement age. So there we go. Let's look at some of the, the differences between a pension preservation fund and a pension provident fund. You're not taxed when transferring your retirement savings to one of these vehicles. So that's number one. You're not ta being taxed. You're allowed to take one withdrawal in both of them prior to re retirement. Okay. You also have the option to withdraw all the cash when leaving your company before retirement. So those are some of the things to be aware of. Just understand that a lump, the lump sum will be taxed. So I can make one withdrawal. Okay. But just understand that it will be taxed. Your first 25,000, however, is exempt of, the, of, of, of tax. So that's the tax free. When it comes to the pension fund, you, this is where it comes to that one third and two thirds. You may elect to receive a third of your retirement benefit as a cash lump sum. And you'll see in the next slide, I'll have an example. Okay. In the provident fund, you can choose to have everything taken out. Uh, as a lump sum, but when it comes to the pension fund, the other two thirds has to be paid, has to be uh, what we call a compulsory annuity. So two thirds has to be paid to you on a monthly basis as an income. That's compulsory. This monthly uh, income will be taxed at your average uh, uh, rate of taxation in retirement, and you'll see on the slide I mentioned just now. The um, the provident fund, the portion that is tax free. Uh, Okay, maybe tax free up to 500,000, but uh, obviously you'll be taxed that um, uh, there's a portion that's that's not exempt from tax, so it works on the sliding scale. With a problem fund, that's not if you don't take anything out, okay, you just have more when it comes to your monthly income. Okay, so what are the benefits? The benefits. Uh, what are your tax treatment of lump sums? And this is what's important to understand. If you're a member of a pension fund or pension preservation fund or a RA fund, you're allowed to take out or commute a lump sum equal to one third of that, of that fund. Unless the entire value of the fund it does not exceed 247, you can take the whole lump sum out. That's the one scenario. If you retired already and you're a member of a provident fund or provident pre preservation fund, you like to take us out as a big, a big lump sum, okay? Unless the rules of of the fund provides for the payment of a compulsory annuity, living annuity, um, uh, uh, as such on the fund. The third scenario: you're already retired and your receipt of of a annuity income from a uh, well, a uh, annuity income from a living annuity. You like to commute that whole fund if it's less than seventy five thousand. Okay, so this is taking out the lump sum. So there's some things you also, there's some additional benefits you can take in consideration. Can I transfer my preservation fund? Yes, you can transfer your preservation fund if it's between a, preserva between a pension preservation fund or between a provident preservation fund or from a pension preservation fund. Remember the table, the table I showed you, the, the two just now? I can always go from, from right to left, but I can't go from, le from, right to, from left to right. Okay, so I can transfer my, my preservation fund from a pension a preservation fund to a pension fund and from a provident pension fund to, uh, to a provident or a pension fund or to a RA. Okay, so if you look at a hierarchy, uh, the provident fund gives you the, the most uh, flexibility. Uh, then a RA, 
Remember the addition of the, another thing with the RA? I can still contribute to, to, uh, RA on a monthly basis and obviously get my contributions, um, tax deductible. Okay. So those are the things you've taken consideration. The last one, the last one that's on the, uh, out of the three would be your pension fund from a flexibility point of view. This is also important to understand. When can I access my preservation fund? You can make one partial or full cash withdrawal at any time before you retire. Okay, on retirement from a pension preservation fund, by the way, you can only take a third lump sum. The balance must purchase a compulsory living annuity, and this will pay your monthly income. However, on a on retirement, when it comes to a pension a provident a preservation fund, you take the whole balance as a cash lump sum. Okay, obviously according to tax tables. We'll talk about it just now. So who are these products most suitable for? First of all, uh, suitable for individuals who want to preserve their current retirement savings, number one. Individuals who want uh, uh, would like more flexibility when selecting underlying investment uh, instruments. And thirdly, individuals who wish to have the proceeds of the investment paid to beneficiaries upon uh, uh, death. So those are, uh, that's what uh, preservation funds are suitable for. Who are they not suitable for? Individuals who may not need, who may need to access the retirement savings more than once before retirement. So you got only one alternative. You have to cash in everything. Okay. And this is something we don't suggest you guys do. How many preservation funds can I join? You can join multiple preservation funds. In other words, every time you join or exit a pension, a pension or provident fund, you can have multiple funds. Just understand that the tax benefit is determined in aggregate. So it looks at your, your portfolio, not individual funds. So not only in respect of individual funds, but also take in consideration that the lump sum portion may only be claimed once. Okay. To be aware of those kind of things. What is the minimum investment at PSG? Our minimum investment amount if, trans if transferring from a provident fund into our preservation fund or from a, from a, a pension fund, our minimum uh, that we take on is 20,000 rand. Okay, so we, we have that kind of stuff too. Can, I, can you contribute to a preservation fund? No. You can only transfer your proceeds from a pension, provident or, or a preservation fund to a preservation fund. Okay. However, when you're looking at that the um, annuity component, and you want to transfer that to a to a um, to a wealth. When you transfer from a preservation fund to a uh, to a living annuity, there's no transfer or initiation fees. You be aware there also. Can you still claim from your provident fund if you are dismissed? Yes, because the money belongs to you. Even if your employer made all the contributions, does not matter whether you resigned or retained or missed, it's your money. Just be aware that, you know, when you cash it in, it will be taxed per the withdrawal lump sum tax table. Remember, your first 25000 is tax free. However, if it was transferred to another fund, there's no tax due. So, yes, yeah, there we go. How might my, my preservation funds benefit uh, a tax? If I take a lump sum out, remember I said your first 25,000, bring my little curse in again. My first 25,000 is tax free. Yeah, the after works on a, on a, on a sliding scale. After retirement age, after 55, you can see your first 500 is tax free. You'll see in the next slide that I have a example. Okay, three simplified example. Oops, sorry, let me take that away. Very simplified example, but here we go. Lump sum taken before retirement. So John, age 40, decides, you know, he's changing jobs, decides to withdraw his retirement savings of one, mil one million as a lump sum. So your first 25,000 is exempt from the tax. The 975,000 on the, based on that sliding scale we saw in the previous slide, will be taxed at 27%. So the tax payable in this scenario is 263,250 on that 975,000. Ouch. <laughs> okay. If you, and let's have example, I'm not going to bring into all the future growth in that. Let's say side, we just leave it at that point in time for another 15 years. Obviously, it will grow much more. Just understand your first 500,000 is exempt of tax. And in our scenario now, if you're to compare apples of apples, my other 500,000 will be taxed at a much lower rate, 18%. I'm paying 90,000 rand 
tax as opposed to 263,000. So it works out to what's at uh, 173,000. Mm, uh, yeah, 173,000, roughly about that. You work it out as you're saving yourself 192% in tax compared to taking a big lump sum earlier. Okay, so remember those things. So how do you select underlying investments? So obviously at PSG Wealth, we can't dictate to you or can't advise you what specific funds to invest in. But when it comes to, remember, it's compulsory retirement savings. You have to comply with the limit set in what, what they call Regulation 28 of the Pension Fund Act. In other words, it limits your equity and offshore exposure. So what we suggest you do is how uh, do you choose your from a broad range of funds? Is to use uh, funds list first of all, see what's available. We've got about 450 funds that uh, that we've done due diligence on. That's first thing. Secondly, use the funds A to Z, and third thing to to use the Regulation 28 calculator to can see are you compliant. So what I mean by that, there's a whole. If you click on this link link here to take you through to the funds available, I suggest print it out. So you have it always with you, so you can see what funds that we that we do have. Number one, number two, click on this link and then work out different scenarios. You know, you want to be involved more of equity, more multi assets, different locations, and things like that. And then, very importantly, you can use the Regulation 28 calculator. So you can see I did a little quick one this morning, and I was not compliant. Why? Because um, I'm too much involved in hedge funds or private equity or uh, 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 other assets. So you go back and tweak it again. Remember, it's a portfolio, not the individual funds. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys. Now, when it comes to costs, uh, what are the fees that will be dictated? What are they for? First of all, we have a ongoing uh, investment admin, uh, the admin fee for the platform. Uh, if you're using PSG funds, there's no initial fee for for PSG funds or other funds. However, if it's a PSG fund, we charge 0.2% plus VAT. If there are other funds, the first one and a half million is 0.5% is plus VAT, and then it works on a sliding scale. Above one and a half a million rand, it slides down to 0.2%. You also may pay asset fees uh, to the asset managers on who you, you trust uh, you're investing in, um, and not obviously incorporated into the unit trust price. Okay, so I hope that answered a lot of you guys' questions. Let's see what questions you guys do have. Uh, let me just open this up quickly. So V, I just uh, explained the fees, 0.2% um, for PSG funds, and then obviously 0.5% um, uh, for uh, for the competitor fees. Okay. How much would you, Milan, how much would you need to retire today? Um, the way I, the way I always understand is the rule of thumb. You need a million rand today for every 4,000 rand in salary or income you need. So you can work it from there. How much would you need to retire? So that's a million rand for every 4,000. That's a rule of thumb. You're going to be more conservative. You need a million rand for every, uh, 5,000. Okay. That's one way of looking at it. It's a difficult one to, to answer. Uh, it depends on your your li current lifestyle and things like that. Look, like that's all the um, the questions. Are there any other questions? Cool. Okay. Thanks for those questions. Let's move on. So in conclusion, what I want you to gain from today's uh, presentation, five things about preservation funds. It is tax, effect, tax effect, effective and tax free, and it's quite easy to, as quick and easy to transfer into them from your pension or provident fund. Your money can keep on growing, and this helps you obviously stay on track to have a great retirement. That's number one. And number two, it also gives you more options. You can choose how and where you want to invest your money according to your needs. Okay, balance funds, whatever the case might be. But also understand that it keeps your money safe. And this is also important to understand. No matter what happens to your other finances, the money you preserve um, in the preservation fund is compulsory retirement funds. No one can touch it. It's safe from your creditors. So those are some of the things you must understand when we talk about preservation funds. Okay, so what are your next action steps? 
Um, register for PSG Wealth Preservation Fund. If you do qualify, remember you can only transfer from a pension or provident fund or a, from a, a, a RA. This presentation will be sent out to you guys hopefully either today or tomorrow, the latest. Any questions you guys have, please contact our Wealth Desk. Uh, our investment specialists are there to help you. So yes, I've given you the tools to help you choose your, fu first, your funds and that for the for your uh, preservation funds. If you have any questions, you're welcome to please contact Henny Woodendahl or contact uh, Clive Panther at uh, Clinton Panther, uh, but use that email address, uh, wealth at PSG, and that's also the the uh, the, the investment specialist that's if the contact phone numbers. Okay, so guys, uh, next week we'll be discussing. Are you worried about retiring? Um, some things there we have to look at. 21st of, of September, are there better, option, better options available than investing in savings accounts? End of the month, we're talking about uh, how to minimize political risk. We've had enough, enough of that recently. Uh, beginning of October, uh, is there a cheaper equity exposure? Do you, have a, do you want to have a dividend income portfolio? That would be the 12th of October, 19th of October, old school versus new school investments. Uh, there's pros and cons there. And the 26, how to secure your financial future. Uh, how secure is your financial future? And in the beginning of November, as we go into our silly season, oh, you need of asset allocation. Okay. But guys, from my side, I hope you this presentation you found beneficial. There's my, my email address. Here's our, our toll-free number. Please do drop me a line. Um, until next week, from my side, thank you very, very much. Um, keep well, and uh, bye for now.